The Blender Foundation Annual Report for 2020. Alright guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing very well. Now I thought I would kind of change up the content a little bit, kind of slow things down and go over the Blender Foundation Annual Report. Now personally, I actually really love seeing things like this. Not many 3D companies do this, so the fact that Blender actually spend a little bit of time and they write everything out so everybody can see it, I think this is great. And I would like to just kind of a little bit of kudos to the people who made this. It's 32 pages long, but it's very well written and it's very well presented, to be honest. It's nice and easy. It doesn't feel like you're reading the report. It kind of feels like a story. There's nice narrative to it. And I'll just quickly go over the contents. So, contents page. A message from the chairman. I'll quickly read some of that. I don't want to put words into Ton's mouth, but I'll kind of read over it for you. The freedom to create the organisation. That kind of gives the backstory of the company, I would imagine. Module teams for core Blender development, the offices, people, the development team, that's one thing that I would like to check out. Quality, industry relations, you obviously get guys like AMD coming into it, Epic, stuff like this, so this might be worth reading as well. Other projects, finances, now this one's kind of, this kind of turns me on, <laughs> I like reading about finances. Blender by the numbers and a thank you, so there's a few things that definitely worth having a check out. So a message from the chairman. The year 2020 has been memorable to say the least, it's been crazy, let's be honest. At the time of writing this, April 2021, the corona pandemic is still paralysing society. Now, I really do hope we get to see the end of this. I know at the moment India and stuff like that is kind of crazy, but it's getting better for a lot of people, mainly first world countries to be honest. But there's hope that vaccinations will bring a return to normal life, hopefully, I've had my vaccines done. Lockdown and working remotely hasn't been easy for anyone. No, it's not been easy for anybody. I've got personal friends who've lost their jobs, get made redundant. I know one who's lost their house because of it. They did get like a six month extension from the bank, but ugh, it was too much debt. So it's not been easy for a lot of people. I've been very fortunate. My wife's kept her job. I've been pretty well paid as well, working from home. So. So I wish you all the best out there anyway. There are a lot of good reasons why we want to be together in real life. It's why the Blender Institute was established in the first place. Many scheduled activities in our headquarters did not happen. In that respect, 2020 was a bit of a gap year. Strange year. Let's put it behind us, let's move forward. For me personally, 20 was dominated by a health crisis. Now, I don't know if a lot of people know this. I know most of the Blender kind of community do. I think he was touching go, to, to be honest, for him. I think he was doing very, very poorly. And it's good to see that he pulled through. Having spent half the year in the hospital for leukaemia treatment, I mean, that alone is... That's, that's draining. I was incredibly lucky to experience a steady recovery and given the all clear in November. Now, congratulations. That would have took it out me, man. That's, you've got to kind of step back. And I, this document kind of gives the vibes that the torch is going to get passed over and fair play to Ton if I was him I would be cashing in my chips and I would be thinking about retirement spending time with the family blah 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 this was a life changing experience in every way within a day the whole organisation was taken out of my hands for most of the year I watched Blender from the sidelines more or less a healthy experience to be honest not least because things continued smoothly so the fact that he dropped out of the company and guys like Francesco the CEO took over and there was steady growth and the company actually grew and it looked good. I think that's confidence in your team and you've got to have that. You've got to be able to take a step away and for your team to take over for you. So that's good for it. Not least because things continue smoothly, blah blah blah. Who did a tremendous job replacing me and Blender projects were admirably led and coordinated. And he basically just thanks his staff for his recognition to a few different people. If there's one good thing I want to take away from last year is Blender's continued positive reception. Wherever we looked, I found encouragement. The community of the Blender contributors grew, the industry support for Blender grew, and best of all, the industry slowly became part of the community. Now that's a big one, that's, that's kind of throwing your weight about there, that's basically saying hey, we're here to play with the big boys. So it basically goes on, a message from the chairman. I'll let you guys read it. This is going to be the decade of open source. Yeah, things are definitely changing. The landscape is changing. And it basically says thanks very much. The freedom to create. Now I'm just going to briefly go over this. It's your basic standard mission statement. Freedom to deploy production software. Freedom to apply creative resources. Freedom to participate in the market. Our core values. We care. 
we share, we work together, we have a story. Now, these are basic mission statements, to be honest. It's, most companies have something along the lines. The only thing I would say is Blender kind of, they kind of echo the, the values. There does seem to be a lot of truth in them. So, the organisation, as a mid-term target, i.e. three to five years, we will continue to work on the reorganisation announced at the Blender conference in 2019. I remember had that big conference, it was quite good actually. The Blender project is a huge success, but the success comes with certain responsibilities, so it's good that they kind of know, okay, we're having a little bit of success here, but we've got to go over it. So the midterm goals are become sustainable. Now, I think they're pretty sustainable now. Future-proof organisation dictated to realising Blender's mission. Secure Blender's original spirit and the legacy of its founder. Again, you're getting that vibe that Ton's going to start stepping down, that there's new people going to come into play. Become an innovative organisation driven by curiosity and the desire to excel at creative technical projects. So, they're just kind of lining out what we're going to do with the organisation. So, you, obviously, you've got the Blender Institute. They deal with things like the software. And then you have the Blender Studio. Now, I love the fact that they've got a Blender Studio. It means they can test the software in a production environment. And it also creates jobs, to be honest. And generally, the stuff that they release really does show off the product. Now, you can talk about the animation, stuff like this. But at the end of the day, it's more of a product demo reel. Module teams for core development. Blender is growing fast with the success of the Blender Development Fund and it is a pretty damn... <laughs> it's, the money they're getting is crazy and I want to pick up on that as well. It's important to make sure the Blender.org project organisation remains future-proof. Now, it can be easy managing a t team or teams or even open source project. It really must be pretty difficult. It's an uphill battle, to be honest. But it does create a lot of kind of... It does create a lot of opportunities, let's put it this way. So when it comes to things, you've got operational bug triaging, onboarding documentation, website development, stuff like this. Now the docs could do with probably getting a little bit of a hand tactical with defined short-term development projects, strategic general roadmaps, product designs, and I did cover the roadmap a couple of weeks ago. How modules work, I'll let you guys go over that as well. Offices, now they've basically got property, let me grab my coffee here. In 2018, Blender moved from its humble office in central Amsterdam to a more spacious premises in the north of the city. Now, Amsterdam's not cheap to live in, to be honest. It's quite expensive. I have a few friends in Amsterdam. I've been there a few times. So having things like this is basically an asset, and it's good that they can bring developers in. They're growing pretty damn big. They've got workshops so they can bring clients in. The people, big shout out to the guys, but I'm not going to go through everybody's name. The development team, developers teams have been some recognition. Now, there's one thing I want to say. The Blender developers are pretty approachable. Compared to a lot of companies, a lot of 3D companies, you don't know who works for them, stuff like this. But because they're approachable doesn't mean you should approach them. <laughs> give them time, give them a bit of space, don't just bog on them. I see a lot of tweets to developers and it's not an easy job, to be honest. Principal developer, senior developer, and this goes over the development team. And you've got coordination teams, senior developers, blah, blah, blah. So this is basically giving a list of who actually works. And there's a lot of people there for a 3D company. It's a pretty big company, to be honest. It really is. Quality, tracker curfew, bug sprints, development operations. I really need somebody like Andreas to come in and kind of give his opinion here because he kind of follows the development side way more than I ever do. Now, this is one that caught my attention. Industry relations. Members of the Blender Development Fund are actively involved in Blender development itself. Notable examples are CPU and GPU. So, obviously, you've got AMD on one side, you've got Intel, and you've got NVIDIA. Universal scene description, so you're going to get USD, the mixer add-on from Ubisoft, pretty cool as well. You've got Alembic and Cycles, now obviously you've got Cycles X. I've not done a video on this, I probably should because it's kind of trending at the moment. But I feel it needs a little bit more development, it needs to be a little bit more feature rich, just it's not production ready, let's put it that way. Other projects, Blenders Conference 2020, Together Apart, I watched it, it was pretty damn good. And it did have that kind of, we're all in this together feel. Scripting for Artists, the popular series from Blender Cloud got extended. Blender Cloud's definitely worth supporting. Blender to do everyday sellers. Finances, income. Now this is the one that, I like market stuff. Growth of Development Fund in 2020. In 2019, the Development Fund generated 840000 and donations, I love the way they say donations because it's the way the company set up, it's still money at the end of the day. In 2020, it amounted to 1.1 million. That's a lot of cash. 
that's a lot of cash. I don't know many 3D companies. I mean, I'm trying to think of companies that make that money. So you've got Modo and stuff like that. But that's a 34% increase in your sales, essentially. That's huge. In terms of Epic Games, they gave $330,000 off. Epic with that money, man. Patreons, corporate individuals, donations from Blender Market, now that's a lot of money Blender Market gave, 81,000 that's, that's a developer, two developers for the year, so congratulations to the guys at Blender Market, that shows you how much money these people are making as well Google, Google your cheap bastards four grand, you could do better than that other large donations and generic small donations so, a lot of dosh, a lot of dosh, finances, expenses donations, contributions to Blender so, obviously Developer salaries it went up forty percent. That's pretty big, to be honest. Developer grants, so obviously developer certain developers get a grant. Chairman salary, so obviously Tom get a wee bit of a boost there. Developers overheads, Blender dot org. I don't know why that's ninety one thousand. Siggraph booth. Well, to be fair, they saved ourselves a lot of dosh this year. Transaction fees, various costs, accounting costs, stuff like this. So one point three million. And it kind of goes into the salaries here. So the CEO or chairman, gross salary in 2020 was 78,000 euros. Not bad. The lowest gross full-time salary for employees was 32,000 euros. So that, that was good pay, to be honest. Well, it's not the best pay, but it's decent enough if you're working as a developer. It's You could live on that, let's put it that way. Budget reservations for next year's Blender by the numbers. Now, this is what I'd like to see. United States... 20% of the market. India, quite a lot of Indians use Blender, probably because it's free and it saves them downloading dodgy software. United Kingdom, 4.7%. Germany, Russia, Brazil, Japan, China. Uh, they kind of echo the stats for this YouTube channel, to be honest. And they're getting a lot, of, approaching 2 million visitors per month. What's the download counts? Blender's download counts. In 2020, Blender has been downloaded over 14 million times. With four major releases during the year, this is an average of 3.5 million downloads per release. So although it's been downloaded 14 million times, it's 4 million users that would probably work it out every time a release comes out. Obviously it's a little bit more, but average users, I would probably say it's 4, 5, maybe 6 million. Blender development funding, it kind of goes on just a little bit. Thanks to everyone for making Blender possible. Thank you. And that's pretty much the Blender annual report. Well made, well written. I like the way the figures are out there for you to read. I like the way that we've got a plan. I like the way that they've set up a roadmap. I like the way they're venturing into new software things like geometry nodes, cycles, stuff like this, sculpting's coming on. It's pretty good news for Blender. It's pretty good news if you're a Blender user. Obviously, you've still got that whole we need to get more jobs created. Anyway, do me a favour, guys. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It does help me out. Uh, if you want to get in contact, you can find me over on Twitter. You know what to do. Take care.